It was a big weekend for the Atlanta Braves as they get a sweep over the Washington Nationals. They also have five players selected to the All-Star game. They trade for Robinson Cano and a big series coming up against the New York Mets. Also, we're less than a week away from the MLB drafts. We're going to begin our coverage of that as well. So a lot to get into on this episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves. Your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I'm your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Check out my bio there to see everywhere I am covering the game of baseball, including the Atlanta Braves in written form over at tomahawktake.com. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at locked on underscore Braves, where you can be part of the conversation. Send me any questions, comments, feedback that you may have for the podcast. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube. Hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. And also hit the like button as well. It helps support the show out a ton. And thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen each and every day. We post episodes daily, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and are free and available on all platforms. Right now, download the Sports Card Investor app today and easily browse over 630,000 cards from every sport with hundreds more added each week. Available for free in the Google Play and Apple App Stores or go to sportscardinvestor.com slash lockdown where you can download the app as well and help support the show. On today's podcast, like I said, going to be a busy one. Gonna Got a lot to get into. You got a sweep of the Washington Nationals, including a walk-off hit on Sunday. You got the All-Star Game selection. Braves heavily involved in that. A trade for Robinson Cano. Big Met series going on. You got minor league prospects. You're going to talk about players that could be traded, players that I would avoid trading if at all possible. And then we are also going to be talking about the MLB draft as well, which is coming up this Sunday. So a lot I want to get into on this Monday episode of Locked On Braves. But let's start with the weekend for the Braves and the game and the action on the field as the Braves get a sweep of the Washington Nationals. They dominate on Friday, exactly what you would hope they'd do in this series. They get a 12-2 to win, uh, so a good way to kick off the weekend. The next two games, not quite as easy. They jumped out to a pretty good lead on Saturday, but then hung on for a 4-3 to win. Things got a little sketchy there late, but they do hold on for the victory. And then on Sunday... At a 2 to nothing lead late, Dylan Lee comes in, gives up a three-run homer, and the Nationals take a 3-2 to two lead. Then Riley homers in the eighth inning to tie it up, and then he also hits the walk-off win in the 12th inning to complete the sweep of the Washington Nationals. So a great series sweep for the Braves coming into a big series with the Mets. Good job by the bullpen on Sunday as well. Six and two-thirds scoreless innings, including not giving up a run in any of the three extra innings innings that they played, despite having that crazy, stupid rule with the ghost runner starting at second base. So great job by the Braves bullpen there. Also, the All-Star Game rosters were announced on Sunday, and the Braves have five players that will be representing them in the All-Star Game. We already knew about Ronald Acuna Jr. Dansby Swanson gets his first All-Star nod. Same for Max Freed, Travis Darno and William Contreras, who will be in the starting lineup with his brother, Wilson. That'll be a pretty cool moment. So the Braves heavily involved there in the All-Star game. There's a chance Austin Riley gets added as well. Obviously, one of the most notable snubs, especially with what he did over the weekend and what he did on Sunday. I think he definitely should be considered, and perhaps we see him as a replacement on the roster, but certainly well-deserving, but so are all the others for the Braves who were added to the All-Star game, so great to see that. Really glad to see Dansby Swanson got in there, even though he wasn't the starter. I feel like he should have been. Um, He had a big day on Sunday as well, so glad to see Dansby Swanson get there. Max Freed as well. I know I wrote an article the other day how about I think he could be the starter for the NL team in the All-Star game, but probably not. Probably goes to Sandy Alcantara or 
uh, Gonslin. You know, there's a really a lot of pitchers that you could give the starting nod to. I still think, you know, Max Fried is a worthy candidate with what he's been doing. And, you know, perhaps you know, with the last couple of starts he has before the All-Star break, he can prove that and earn that start. But he's the guy that ended the season last year in the World Series. We pretty cool uh, to see him start the All-Star game as well. And then if all that wasn't enough, the Braves made a trade for Robinson Cano on Sunday. Now, Robinson Cano was with the Mets. They let him go. They're paying you know his big salary. Padres picked him up. He's mainly just been in their minor league system, been at their AAA level here for a while, and he's been hitting the ball well there. And the Braves make a move to acquire Robinson Cano just for some cash consideration. This is a low risk, really no risk type move for the Braves to try to get some help at second base without Ozzy Albies. Orlando Arcia has been struggling there offensively since taking over full-time duties. Bill Goslin not exactly inspiring anything at second base either. So it's a, a low-risk move for the Braves to bring in a guy like Robinson Cano, a guy with veteran experience and a left-handed bat, which I mention a lot at the Braves, you know, could use some more lefties on their bench or in their lineup. Uh, and Cano certainly will give them that. Now, just my overall feelings on the trade. I don't, I don't love it just for the fact that it's a guy that's been busted for steroids twice in his career. It's just not really a, a good look overall. And I don't really love the idea of having Robinson Cano on the, on the team. Can he be a good fit? Can he help the Braves win some games? Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, I think what this also is, too, is you do this early enough in the month of July. Here we are, you know, July 11th. You know, still got three weeks before the trade deadline. You give Cano a couple of weeks, see what he can do, see if he has anything left, and then you perhaps talk, think about making a bigger move before the trade deadline. You know, Ozzy Albies you know, could come back this season. Who knows you know, what he'll look like once he does, but – I think this is also a move just early enough in the season that if it doesn't work out, then you can still make a move before the trade deadline to try to make an upgrade at second base. So, you know, how long is Cano around? I don't know. Uh, again, I think this is just a flyer. See what he has left. See what he can do. Give the Braves another left-handed option. And again, just kind of a, a trial run here to see if, you know, he can hold it down until Ozzy comes back or if they need to make a bigger move before – the deadline so again i don't necessarily love the move but it's also a no risk move for the braves so we'll see what robinson cano can do uh, sounds like he'll be activated for the game on monday uh, where the braves will face matt max scherzer and the Mets. so we'll see if he's in the lineup monday night um but yeah they make a move for for cano and we'll see again a no risk type move uh still got several weeks before the trade deadline if things don't work out they can cut him and it's no big loss, uh, but certainly an interesting move by Alex Anthopoulos and the Atlanta Braves to trade for Robinson Cano. All right, next, I want to get into that Mets series. I normally do my previews at the end, but this is such a big series for the Atlanta Braves, who, with the Mets' loss on Sunday and the Braves' win, are now just a game and a half back of the New York Mets. We'll break down that series next. Our next partner has a product I use uh, literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted better gut health. As I get older, that's something I struggle with every day. And AG1 has worked wonders for me. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food, source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. You're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. It cost him nearly $100 a day. So he cre created Athletic Greens after experiencing this to help it make it easier for you. And right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com MLB network. 
Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. The Atlanta Braves begin a three-game series with the first place New York Mets on Monday. And what a big series this is. This should be a lot of fun. Now, even after this series, the two teams will have 12 games head-to-head -to -head together. So the division will not be decided in this series. But with the way things have played out over the last month and a half now, the Braves making up a ton of ground in the division with the way the Braves have been playing, and really the way the Mets have been playing all year long, I mean, they came out of the gates hot and they've really, you know, they been good all season long. You have to give them credit. But now the Braves are playing like the team we all thought they could be and would be. You know, five all-star players on the team. They have four starting pitchers with 100 strikeouts or more. You know, Riley's getting hot. Olsen's, you know, been doing good things all year long. Now he's starting to do it a little bit more consistently and come through with runners in scoring position. Swanson's been great all year. Michael Harris is coming up. Give them a jolt in the lineup. Travis Darno's been great all year. William Contreras. And they have guys in the bottom of the lineup now in Ozuna. You know, Rosario's coming back. Duvall, when he's in there, you know, guys that can take you deep. And that's a big, uh, you know, a full lineup, top to bottom, what we envision the Braves doing. And I didn't even mention Ronald Acuna Jr., their best player, who's really yet to get going, still coming back off that injury. So, this lineup, top to bottom, is one of the best in all of baseball, and it's certainly fun to watch. And again, what the pitching staff is doing is just remarkable right now. So the Braves are clicking on all cylinders. They're becoming that championship team once again. And again, they're going up against the Mets, a team that's been good all year long. They're going to be good. I don't see them going away. But this is the first real clash where you have both teams, I think, you know, playing good baseball. Uh, and the Mets coming off a series split, four-game series split against the Marlins. You know, ran into Sandy Alcantara on Sunday and got shut out. Their offense really kind of struggling as of late, but we know how good that Mar Miami Marlins pitching can be. But the Braves entered this series just a game and a half back after they were 10 and a half games back, you know, not too long ago. So this is certainly an important series for both teams. It almost feels like it's more of an important series for the Mets with what the Braves have done over the last month and a half and crawling back into this division. But it's a big series for both sides, that is for sure. And the matchup tonight on Monday, Max Scherzer versus Max Free, the battle of the Maxes, that is going to be must-see television. You know how intense Max Freed is. Max Scherzer may be one of the most intense players in all of baseball. This is going to be a pure battle, and I cannot wait to watch that game and see how things unfold and really set the tone for this entire series, which is going to be you know, a very good series to watch. It should get a lot of national attention. It's the closest division race in all of baseball, which again is crazy to think about when the Braves or the Mets have one of the largest division leads going into June. So this is going to be a fun one to watch. It's going to tell us a lot about both of these teams and where they are right now and where they will be going forward again still a lot of lot left to be decided with you got the trade deadline coming up they'll still have 12 more head-to-head -head matchups after this but this will be a good testing ground proving ground for both of these teams in the division all these division games are going to be super important going forward but you got max scherzer versus max freed Look, I could dive into the numbers. You know both of these pitchers. You know how talented they are and how fun this matchup's going to be. There's really not anything else that needs to be said. And then you have David Peterson versus Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider's been one of the most dominant pitchers in all of baseball. He hasn't backed down on the biggest stage. You think about that Sunday night game against the Dodgers, one of the best performances we've seen from him. So I don't think he's going to be caught up in the pressure of the moment against the division rival. So I'm really excited to see that one as well. And then in the finale, in an afternoon game, you have Bassett going up against Charlie Morton. Charlie Morton starting to pitch like the Charlie Morton that we're used to seeing. So that should be a fun game as well. I mean, all these matchups are really good. The Mets have some really good pitching. Bassett and Peterson both with an ERA of around three and a half to four. So these are going to be some good pitching matchups. The Mets lineup, you know, Alonzo, Pete Alonzo is the only one, you know, that's an 900 OPS player. Everybody else is either around 800 or lower, but everybody's in that 750 to 800 range. So it's it's really a deep lineup, top to bottom. 
Again, not as much slugging as the Braves, but they do a good job putting the ball in play. They get their hits. Um, you know, that type of, of team, that type of lineup, those type of at-bats. So, again, I think it's going to be a good challenge for the Braves. And I think it's going to be a really fun series. I know it's going to be a fun series. Hopefully the Braves come out on top. But we're looking to see, you know, which team which team can go up head-to-head and get it done right now with the way each team is playing, with the Braves finally playing a good brand of baseball. And, again, the Mets have been playing solid all year long. So really excited for this matchup and see who comes out on top. All right, next, I want to talk a little bit about prospects who could be traded as we enter the trade deadline, who I think the Braves will likely hold on to, and also just give a little bit of an MLB draft preview as we begin our coverage of that for the upcoming draft this Sunday. Welcome to the world of sports cards. Reimagine the sports card investor app is the hobby's most powerful resource. Quickly check the value of your favorite cards, find great deals, and profit from the hobby that you love. Available completely free in the Google Play and Apple App Stores, the Sports Card Investor app is a must-have for baseball fans. It's completely free, easily browse over 630,000 cards from every sport, with hundreds more added each week. Check the latest values of your favorite cards with 7-day or 30-day charts. Find the best prices and buy directly through the app with their eBay Deals feature. Download the Sports Card Investor app today, available for free in the Google Play and Apple App Stores, or go to sportscardinvestor.com backslash locked on so you can help support the show by going and downloading the app that way. So let's dive into the prospects and the MLB draft a little bit here. As the trade deadline approaches, I wanted to talk about prospects that could be traded. I wrote an article on tomahawktake.com a couple of weeks ago asking, are there any untouchable, untradeable prospects for the Braves. And just a spoiler alert, I don't think there are. I don't think the Braves have any prospects. You know, Michael Harris has graduated now, and so has Spencer Strider. We're obviously taking them off that list. For me, the Braves don't have any untouchable prospects. They don't have any elite-type prospects at the moment. That doesn't mean some of the guys in this group won't turn into that. But right now, there's not a prospect in this system I would not trade in the right deal. Having said that, there are prospects I would try to hang on to, if at all possible. And something else we've talked about, the Braves don't have a lot of holes. There's not a lot of areas they really need to, need to upgrade. We talked about second base, you know, the making this move for Cano to see what he can do. And then, you know, perhaps in a couple of weeks, if it's not working out, you look to make a bigger move at second base until Ozzy can hopefully return. You can always make upgrades in the bullpen. But I think when Jansen comes back, the bullpen will kind of settle down a little bit. And, you know, hopefully they still may get Kirby Yates. The rotation could get Mike Soroka at some point. You have Kyle Muller waiting for another opportunity as well. So for me, the Braves are pretty set. The only other area you could possibly upgrade is left field. And they have two guys right now. They're both paying, you know, almost double digit million dollars a year in Adam Duvall and Eddie Rosario. So, to make an upgrade there, you'd almost have to move one of those guys in the deal to free up some money. So, again, just not a lot of wiggle room, not a lot of spots for the Braves to make you know marginal trades this deadline unless an injury comes up before then. So, these are the players that I think have the most value that I would try to avoid moving at the trade deadline unless it's in a a big deal. And again, I don't think the Braves make a big deal this. Tra- at this trade deadline. I think Von Grissom, Jared Schuster, Kyle Muller, Drew Waters, Amberios Taveras, AJ Smith Shaver, Freddie Tarnock, and Andrew Hoffman. Those are the guys that I think have the most value in the Braves system right now. And those are players that I would hang on to at the trade deadline, if at all possible. Again, if a big deal comes along, say the Braves do want to go after a Luis Castillo and the Reds like some of those prospects that I just named. Uh, I would be all for moving those players in order to get a player of that caliber. I just don't see that happening at this deadline. Now, players, prospects, I think could be traded and I think are eligible to be traded and in the type of deal that we could be looking at for, you know, a marginal type player, somebody maybe to fill in at second base, maybe to get another lefty bat to replace, you know, Rosario and Duvall in left field if you don't think they're going to come around again. I'm not saying they should do that or will do that. 
again, there's just not a lot of opportunity. There's not a lot of holes that you can feel right now. But prospects, I think they could part with, and you wouldn't lose sleep over Tucker Davidson, Bryce Elder, two pitchers that I, I really do like and I think can have a good run and success at the big league level. But I think both of them are most likely number four, number five starters. Perhaps they reach their ceilings, their number three starters. So would not lose a ton of sleep over trading either one of those. They're basically just great back of the rotation depth starters. Braden Shoemake, I've never never loved Braden Shoemake. Sorry, uh, I just I think he's always you know been a utility type player, bench type player, and there is a role for that type of player. But I just don't really see the need or fit for him. Uh, you already have Orlando Arcia to kind of play that role. Uh, I just think if you wanted to get rid of Braden Shoemake, you know, in the right deal, I think I think you know I think we would be okay with that. Uh, Darius Vines, Brooke Wilson, Alan Renhill, uh, Trey Harris, Justin Dean. You know, these are all players that I think are blocked in the Brave system. Players that are, are fourth outfielders, utility players, back of the rotation starters, guys that you could part with, but players that could have some value for other teams. You know, if you're looking to make a move for, you know, a middle reliever or a left handed bench bat. You know, these are prospects that you could trade and I think make sense in that, that type of deal. So, again, those are the prospects I would try to hang on to. Those are the prospects I think could get dealt as we move towards the trade deadline. All right, the MLB draft does begin this Sunday. So I wanted to do a little primer for it on this Monday edition of the podcast. And throughout the week, we're going to take a deeper dive, looking at some mock drafts and breaking down some of the players that I think the Braves should be looking at. But let's just do, again, just a, a brief overview. The MLB draft starts this Sunday, July 17th, and runs through July 19th. First round targets for the Braves. They've really been going college heavy uh, in the last couple of drafts, and I think that's where most people will leave. They will go either a college arm or a college bat. Most people think it's going to be a college arm. Again, that's what they've leaned on in the past couple of drafts. Most of the best college arms are coming off injury. Um, that opens the door for the Braves to perhaps find some big upside at 20. Connor Pradlip is a guy that, you know, was supposed to be a top five pick, but he's hardly pitched at all in the last two years because of injury. And he's somebody that the Braves could snatch at 20. And I think has a lot of upside. We'll get into some more names like that. 12 of the top 21 ranked prospects are high school players by MLB.com. So again, those, high ranking prospects that are probably going to be off the board by the time they get to the Braves anyway, are our high school players. After that, it really just becomes a wide range of college prospects. And that's where I think the Braves pull from the Braves. Again, seem most likely linked to college arms. I mentioned Connor Prelip out of Alabama, Gabriel Hughes from Gonzaga, Blake Tidwell from Tennessee or Cooper Jerpy from Oregon state. Those are some of the names I think have been most mentioned, and that's the area around where those players could go, that 20th pick, which is where the Braves will pick in the draft. So just wanted to set that primer. Later in the week, probably tomorrow, we're going to look at some of the mock drafts, and I'll, I'll talk about some of the players who have been mocked to go to the Braves in this upcoming draft, and then we'll just continue to dive into that throughout the week as we get ready for the MLB draft this weekend. So. And that will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Thank you for making Locked On Braves your first listen every day. Again, we'll be back tomorrow talking about game one against the Mets. We'll also dive back into the MLB draft preview. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB Prospects, where host Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. He'll also be setting you up for the MLB draft. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast, just like this one. And again, thanks for making, uh, make sure, thank you for listening and be sure to follow us on Twitter at locked on underscore Braves. You can follow me at shortstop ball. Also make sure that you subscribe, rate and review and to the podcast wherever you get your podcast and we will talk to you next time.